Aloha and good morning on a very cold Saturday and um, we are going to do a special sermon this morning and um, for everyone that is on the fence about salvation <clears throat> and how it applies to your Christian walk or if you're a new Christian or uh, on the fence with being a believer, I'm here to tell you that um, I got some great news. Great news from salvation, for salvation. And so I want to start out with a prayer. And then I want to go into what are the steps of salvation which there is none and uh, give some examples in uh, scripture there's going to be a lot of scripture so go ahead and uh, get your Bibles ready and your notes because this one is pretty big and so let's say a quick prayer Lord Jesus thank you very much for waking us up today thank you very much for having your hand over us uh, keep us safe as we navigate through the holidays with family members. Help us to have tolerance and patience as we walk in your light. Help us be the example. And we ask you in Christ our Lord, and everyone said, Amen. Okay, folks, it's a little bit about uh, salvation. So, <clears throat> many people are looking for steps to salvation. People like the idea of an instructional manual, don't we? We all like the step one, step two, step three, step four, however many steps there is. The instruction manual with five steps, that is if followed with result in salvation. What is that an example of? I'll tell you. An example of this is Islam with five pillars. According to Islam, if the five pillars are obeyed, salvation will be granted. Because the idea of a step-by-step -step process to salvation is appealing. That's why you have a great amount of people converting to the Islamic faith. <clears throat> and the process thereof. Many in the Christian community make the mistake presenting salvation as a result of a step-by-step -step process. Roman Catholicism has a step-by-step -step process. It is called the Seven Sacraments. Various Christian denominations add baptism, public confession, turning from sin, speaking in tongues, etc., as steps to salvation however and but the Bible only represents one step to salvation now an example of this would be the Philippian jailer who asked Paul quote what must I do to be saved Paul responded, quote, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Turn your Bibles to Acts 16, verse 30 to 31. Acts 16, verse 30 to 31. And I've marked off my Bible, and so, but. I'll give you a little bit of time to get there and we're staying all away in the New Testament where we'll be in Romans, 2nd Corinthians and the book of John. So I want you to turn to Acts 16, 30 to 31 <clears throat> and I'll mark off where we're at. And I love this travel Bible that that I, I love to read it because it condenses all the, the scriptures because it's in small print. 
Okay, Acts 16, again, verses 30 to 31. And it says this, He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved for, for you and your household. So, what are the key key elements in this in this two scriptures in thirty thirty one? Well, if you look very closely, it's believe in the Lord Jesus. That's a blanket statement right there. It requires you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. <clears throat> you and your household. You individually and your whole household who's your whole household your family your family that's one of the one of my favorite scriptures now when we're talking about being saved okay faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior is the only step to salvation the only step write that down faith in Jesus Christ is is as the Savior is the only step to salvation. The message of the Bible is abundantly clear. We have all sinned against God. Turn your books to uh, Bibles to Romans chapter 3. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. <clears throat> going to and here we are Romans chapter 3 verse 23 and it says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God the message of the Bible let me get my notes here because we keep on coming off I only have a few seconds to get this is a new phone I'm navigating with the message of the Bible is abundantly clear we all have sinned against God because of our sin we deserve to be eternally separated from God go to Romans chapter 6 verse 23 Romans chapter 6 verse 23 and it says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord what are the key elements in this scripture Romans Romans chapter 6 verse 23 it says the wages of sin is death sin is death but there's a gift a gift of God equals eternal life is eternal life ain't that wonderful folks it's amazing isn't it <clears throat> Because of our sin, we deserve to be eternally separated. Because of his love for us, as stated in John 3.16, God took our human form and died in our place, taking the punishment that we deserve. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. <clears throat> And it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What are the key elements in verse 8? That God demonstrates his love for us. Okay? Even though we were sinners. Even though we're still sinners. Because Jesus Christ died for us. That's incredible. Okay? That's great. Let's go on to more scripture. God took a human form and died in our place, taking the punishment that we, we deserve. As stated, as what we, what we read in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. <clears throat> 2 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might be, excuse me, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What are the key words in this verse? This verse talks about to be God made him who had no sin. We're referring to Jesus Christ. Had made him, had no sin to be sin for us because we are sin. So that in him we might become righteous in the eyes of the Lord. Second Corinthians is also one that you need to write because that is very, very important. God promises forgiveness of sins and eternal life in heaven to all who receive by grace through faith Jesus Christ as our Savior. We're going to go into John. So open up your books to the book of John. I'm going to go to chapter 1, verse 12. Chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Okay? What are the key elements on this verse in, in, in 12? It says, Yet to all who did receive him. Now, you have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to receive him. And there's a lot of people in this world that say, oh yeah, I believe in God. It's a blanket statement. I believe in God. Okay, so did you receive him? All right, so you, you, you all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, believe in his name. He gave the right to become children of God. What is that right? When we believe in his name, we are automatically children of God. Okay? In 12. I would like to go to another scripture in John. And I hope you're writing this down. Um, let's go to uh, John 3.16. John 3.16, which is the famous one of all. John 3.16. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What are the key elements in verse 16? Well, if you look at it, God gave his own one, one and only Son, not two, one. That whoever believes in him, now there's a belief, and I'll go over that toward the end of this, of this sermon. If you believe in him, if you believe in his name, that if you declare him Lord and Savior in your life, that's belief. Well, you declare it, you confess it, you don't hide it. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. What does that mean, shall not perish? Meaning that you shall not perish. Remember when we went back to Romans chapter 6, verse 23? The wages of sin is death. Remember Romans 3, verse 23? Romans 6, verse 23? The wages of sin is death. It, this is referred to in John 3.16 that you shall not perish, but have eternal life. Have eternal life. If you go on more to verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Through Him. Isn't that wonderful, John, saying that about our Lord? Right? Where's the steps in that? Other religions have steps. Christianity has no steps, but only one. Go to John chapter 5, verse 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. In John chapter 5, verse 24, it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. You see that? You see where this all connects? It all ties in to what Jesus Christ did for us? 
It all ties in. All. <clears throat> God promises forgiveness of sins and eternal life in heaven to all who receive by grace through faith. By grace through faith. Jesus Christ as Savior. Salvation is not about certain steps we must follow to earn
pictures and you see how how amazing especially first corinthians chapter 15 in the first verses talks about it paul is so humble he demonstrates humility when he talks about being abnormally born he talk when he's talking about that he's talking about himself being not worthy can you believe that apostle paul he's he's not worthy he's he, he's like I'm normal. I'm, 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 I'm abnormal because of what he did. But when Paul comes around full circle, he talks about his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, his commitment, and 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 his preaching, and 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 of course we all know that Paul was more martyred. <clears throat> and he says, and check this out, verse nine says, "For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve." He says he does. He said he declares, "I don't even deserve to be called an apostle because I I persecuted the church of God." Now, if you look deeply at this verse eight and nine, you'll see not only humility, but you'll see the repentance. You see the the the, the act of repentance, the the, the vocal act of repentance and this is apostle paul folks this is the guy okay that loved jesus so much he goes on to chapter 10 by saying but by but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace to me was not without effect you see what he's declaring he goes he, he talks about he talks about the grace of God and he talks about this is what I am and his grace to me was without effect amazing he declares that no I worked harder than all of them and he did and that's not a boast he's trying to set the tone of, of what of what he has done harder than all of them yet not I but the grace of God that was with me whether then it is I or they this is what we preach and this is what what you believe you see plural if you look at it plural whether then it is I or they this is what we preach you got to understand there there's other apostle that was that was sent out to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth that was the command in the ascension peter was still preaching at this particular time i i recommend that you would you would you would read acts the book of acts which is in the new testament it'll give you a lot of more detail so he he genuinely says we and whether then it it is i they or this what we preach and this is what you believed okay what you believed what we believe today what we believe today bookmark first corinthians chapter 15 because it will explain to you along with all the other scriptures in combination how important the elements of of, of what paul is trying to say and let me sum this up I want to go ahead and say this. <clears throat> Jesus had to die in our place. We are absolutely incapable of paying our sin debt to God or cleansing ourselves from sin. Only God could accomplish our salvation. And so he did. God himself completed the steps by thereby offers salvation to anyone who will receive it from him. Let me stop right there. Thereby offers salvation to anyone. Anyone who will who will receive it from him you have to receive christ folks you have to receive christ salvation and forgiveness of sins is not about following steps it's about receiving christ as your savior and recognizing that he has done all the work for us god requires only one step not steps of us receiving jesus christ as our savior from sin and fully trusting in him alone as the way of salvation that is what distinguishes the christian faith from all other 
religions, each of which has a list of steps that must be followed. The other religions have the steps. We don't because we trust. The Christian faith recognizes that God has already completed and simply calls on repentance. Okay? Calls on repentance to receive him in faith. Let me sum this up for you. Have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior today? Have you? Have you received the good word? Have you received? Because what you have read here or listened here, I should say, today, and if so, accept Christ today. Accept his, his, his gift to all of us. That that is the only requirement, that you receive him as Lord and Savior and you repent for your sins. So I hope that really helped you because let me tell you this, I always re-educate myself. I always love to preach and this, is, it, this has to be one of the most important things in your walk with Christ, folks. It has to be. It has to be. You don't have to work to your salvation. And anything that you do is just the fruits of the labor as a, as, a, as a walking with Christ, as a Christian. Okay? What do you think about the first, the first thing when you wake up in the morning? What do you think about the last thing that when you go to bed and lay your hand, like, excuse me, your head on the pillow? Do you think about Christ? Do you pray? Do you thank Him for what you have? Do you think in your mind what I can do to serve him? Do you think about helping helping brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you? Or even if they're not in Christ, do you think about helping your fellow man? Something to think about. Something to think about. So I hope you got a lot of, of the teachings and I enjoyed it too. I just want to highlight again uh, some of the things that you need to reread. I would recommend reading Corinthians, especially 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, dive deep in, in the book of John. I love the book of John. Um, it highlights a lot of what we're talking about. But always remember that if you believe in Christ, you are saved. This is, one I, this is the takeaway. You are saved if you believe in the gospel scriptures if you believe in Christ if you declare him your Lord and Savior and not just by mouth or profession you have to do that too as well but by in your heart you see God knows our hearts okay you can't flash a badge and get by you, you got to know your heart and you have to be you know we all sin you know and you know one sin that really it's, it's, it's attacking me right now is basically gossip you know, we all talk about family members and, you know, the, the, our disappointments with family members. It's gossip. And, you know, and it, I, I get into that, that discussion and, and conundrum with, with a lot of that. But we need to stop. We need to stop. We need to fortify them. And you know what? The hardest thing to do is teach them this in our families. Because they're so anti-God anti-Jesus. We live in a culture today that's a, it's a shame. And so we just have to be good stewards and, and good examples and say to ourselves, wow, you know, I want, I want what I want what my wife has or I, you know, not me, but you know, I want what John or, 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 or the following or John's wife has, you know, and they, they, they beat to a different drum. What, what's going on with that? they take a dive deeper and they find out it's all generated through Jesus Christ right all generated anyway folks uh, have a great weekend I enjoyed this sermon I really did don't forget to re-study don't just write down the notes and put it away you need to be active active in your, your, your walk with Jesus Christ active in the word active dive into the scripture because listen we all die we all will pass and where we go matters okay having the love and the faith in Jesus Christ is very important anyway folks coming up on the 34th minute have a great weekend uh, I'll see you next week uh, Saturday 
Um, hopefully I can get something out to uh, Oasis Christian Chat. I've been kind of a resting. We've been taking some time off, so but uh, it doesn't inhibit, you know, giving you the word every Saturday, folks, at 1030. Anyway, take care of yourself. I love you, and so does Jesus. Aloha.